I'll get started here in the level one view. And what I'm going to do now is click on my model category. Okay, so when I check model category, what I'm going to be creating are model lines. And you can see that the placement plane is set to level one. So that's going to be where the bottom of this mass exists. So I'm just going to click on the rectangle tool here so I can get these all done at once. And I'm going to go to where these planes intersect. Okay, so I can see that it snaps to that one. And then I'm going to come down to this one. And by using the rectangle tool and drawing that in, I get all four lock constraints at once. So now I can click these one, two, three, four. And essentially, I have enough now to create this mass. Okay, so I could do more. I could create another shape at the top. Um, so why don't I do that? Actually, we could simply go to 3D now and select these model lines and say create form. Right now I just get a simple extrusion or alternatively, I can go back here to model, click on pick, um, pick lines. And instead of choosing reference plane level one, I'm going to use the reference plane top that I've created and named. So now if I click on any of these lines, you can see I get a temporary dashed blue line to tell me where it's going to be. So just to make this a little more interesting, I'm going to put in uh, an offset of let's say seven feet okay so I'm clicking over these guys and just to make sure I'm getting the right side of this line I'm gonna use uh, an orthographic view in the 3d view just so that I, I know where I'm clicking these two okay now that I've got those lines in place I'll switch back to an ISO and you can see I've got these two rectangles and I'm just going to hit escape and You'll notice there's a slight difference here in the conceptual modeling editor is that when I select a group of lines, just one of them, I get the entire chain. So I'm going to grab this one, hold down control and select this one. And now if I click on create form and choose solid form, I'm going to get that tapered form that I've got. OK, so I know that uh, this top is is set to it's the top of my form but it should be a line locked to let's just go to an elevation. It should be a line locked to this. So if I use this show constraints, it's not, I can tell that I've got a burgundy line here. That's a line locked in the, the bottom. So what I'm going to do is hit AL or use the align tool from modify tools and just select that reference plane. And then I'm going to hover over here and you can see that when I hover over the face, the top face of my mass, it's telling me that it's form element and it's a surface. So I know that I'm getting the right geometry. So I'll click on that and hit the lock and then go back to my 3D view and I'll test out my framework again. OK, so I'm going to go back up to this button right here to flex out my parameters. OK, you can see that this button's called family types and it brings up a dialog box that's got the parameters that I've created. So I've got height, length and width in here. So I'm going to make my width 80 feet and I'm going to make the length 120. And then for the height, let's make that uh, 56. OK, so you'll notice that I didn't enter any feet uh, symbols there. I just typed in the number. If I did need to get uh, an inches, maybe I would go back in here and I would type in 56 foot six and then I don't need to worry about the inches sign because I put the foot in uh, but if I want I needed six and a half then I would put a space and a half my inches now we'll hit apply on this and we can see we've got some pretty strange geometry here so let me just hit OK and I'm gonna move in here and see what's going on with this so the reason why I'm getting a tapered form here something that we didn't quite expect is because of these edges. These faces didn't get a line lock to the planes, only the edges that we created them from. OK, so if I need those faces instead and I don't want a tapered form, I'm going to go back and just take care of this. Well, actually, I'm not going to undo it. There's another feature that we can use to basically deconstruct this mass. So you'll notice that right now I'm hovering over any of these faces or these edges. I can select them, 
right? So if I grab this, I get a gimbal that I can stretch this out or I can go to a specific point and make that change as well with the gimbal. And these aren't specific, or these aren't uh, exclusive to just moving with the gimbal. We can grab these uh, sub elements and we can use modification tools like rotate on them. So if we put that in, you can see that's skewed this whole form. Okay, so now we'll go back, um, just flatten this out a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is hit tab. And what that does is it selects the entire form. And when I get the entire form, you see my ribbon extends as well. And there's a, a host of other tools that I can use, like adding an edge. Okay, so if I add an edge, basically it's going to, um, well, put another line segment in there for me. Okay, and, and to add that edge, more or less all I'm doing is just uh, putting my cursor on one of these boundary lines. Okay, and then from there you can select these and start creating more complex forms. Okay, so again, let's go back to that regular shape. I'll grab the entire mass again, and then we've got this other one called Add Profile. So if I need another horizontal plane, then I'm basically just hovering over the surface and placing it where I need it to be. And then by going in and grabbing these, we can grab that line and then move it up. Or we can grab an individual line segment and move that out, okay? Which will give me that nice curve, okay? So I don't want any curves in this right now. I just want something like a simple box just to start laying out uh, some schematic design. So I'm gonna grab the entire form here and just hit dissolve. And what dissolve will do is turn this back into the four profiles that ended up being that loft. So this one I'm going to remove, this one I'm going to remove as well, and I'm just gonna grab this guy and hit create form and get that box again. Okay, so if I switch back to an orthographic view, we can see I've got my top reference plane um, I'll hit align again and get that locked up. And then in the, in the isometric view, I'm just going to switch that back. And I've got these other reference planes that I need to get attached to these faces. Okay, so I'm going to hit align again and then grab a reference and then hit the face. And you can see this dash blue line comes across to say, hey, you've just aligned this face to that reference plane but I need to lock it so that my parameters uh, actually work for me. So I'm gonna do that three more times. Grab this one and this one, lock it. Grab this one and this one, lock it. And then this one and this one and lock it. Okay, so that should be all we need to do to get this fully uh, flexible with the parametrics. So I'll move that over here and open up that family types dialog again. And now you can see, I'm gonna switch these back. So 56 feet, the length I want it to be 120, and the width I want it to be 80. So if I hit apply, you can see that my entire cube or my uh, rectangle here has decreased with those sizes that I've put in. So there's one more thing before we get out of here. You might want to create uh, a material to help you with your schematics so that you can name it uh, according to a usage or a space type. So another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to my family types dialog again and I'm going to create a new parameter from here for the material. So I'm going to call this one usage material or mass usage, maybe we should be specific. Okay, and this one here, again, we're gonna make this an instance because when we place this into the project, I might have multiple masses and I'm gonna to wanna to use them for uh, different things. So you can see here, this time by creating the parameter from this dialog box, these aren't grayed out. So that said, I'm gonna leave the discipline as common, but the type of parameter, I don't want this to be length. I want this to be a material. So by changing that to material, it moves the group parameter under materials and finish. And I'm fine with that, so I'm gonna hit okay. And now you can see I've got a mass usage material, okay, which is set to by category. So that's okay, I'll hit okay on that for now. And what I wanna do is grab 
uh, either the entire mask uh, form or maybe one specific face. So right now, if I select just that one specific face, you can see there's instance parameters for that sub element, which I can change. Or coming back in here and hitting tab, I can grab the entire mass and then assign this category through the instance parameters for the entire solid. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is click on this button right here that says associate family parameter. We could enter this parameter in here, but I don't wanna do that. I wanna be able to associate it so that in the project, I can change these materials for every single form that I put in here. So I click on this button and you can see that material parameter that I created is sitting right here. So I hit okay. And I think we're pretty much ready to go, uh, except maybe we want to show one more thing before we get out of here. Uh, if you go back, uh, let me just put in another rectangle and I'm going to set my reference plane to be the top here this time. So whatever I draw now is going to be on that plane, which is essentially the top plane. But what I'm drawing is going to be uh, relative to the top of the form, not the reference plane it's attached to. So I'm going to put in another rectangle here. I'm just going to use the pick lines option again, and I'm going to make this one. Uh, let's make it 20 feet. OK, and using that pick lines option, I'm going to come in here and put four more lines in. So now when I grab these these line segments, OK, let me just get out of that pick lines option. I'm going to say create form, but this time I'm going to use the void form and you can see these lines maybe you can't see it's very faint but these are orange so when i select this form or i don't really have to select it i just actually have to let it finish what it's doing you can see it's removed that geometry okay so by selecting the bottom of that geometry i can use this z axis and push it all the way down it should snap into place and you can see it's given me an align lock there okay so that said, we could put uh, four more reference planes in here, call those atrium void or whatever you want, really. I, I'm not going to leave that in there. I just wanted to let you see how easy it is to put the void geometry in here and start carving out from this initial mass. So I'm going to hit the tab again a couple times and then just grab that void mass and hit delete. I don't want to actually have that space in there for the time being. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm going to hit uh, the big R at the top, say save as family. And I'm just going to save this to my desktop as conceptual mass schematic. And hit save. The man himself, Bill, has just signed in. Um, I'm just going to load this into the project now. I'm going to leave it open, so I'm not going to hit this one. Uh, I might need to make edits to this, so I'm just going to hit load into the project. And what happens now is you can see that I've got this square and it's just asking me, okay, well, where do you want to place this? So I'm going to put one here and I'll put one over here. So now I've got two instances of this one mass family.